Queen Esther, and thanks so much for joining me for Esther chapter 10, the last chapter of Esther. After today, you have read a whole book out of the Bible. That's great. Keep reading God's Word and learning God's Word. In Esther chapter 10, we learned that on the day that the Jews were supposed to be destroyed, that they were able to destroy their enemies instead. So they created a holiday to remember how God had saved them from destruction through Esther and through her life. But let's go ahead and wrap up Esther chapter 10, three verses. And the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea and all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. So we see how great Mordecai had become in, in the kingdom. But there you have it. That's my story of how I was brought into the kingdom for such a time as this to save my people, God's chosen people, the Jews. God had a special plan for my life. And you know what? God has a special plan for your life as well. My life is over and my book is already written, but perhaps your book has just begun. And what is being written on the pages of your story? Are you seeking to follow the Lord? Are you looking for his plan and his purpose in all your situations? You know, I didn't always love all the situations I was in. It was no fun to lose my parents at a young age and, and not ideal to be raised by a cousin. And I really feared for my life when I went before the king to request to stop Haman's evil plan without an invitation. He could have put me to death. But God was with me every step of the way, and God wants to be with you too. But first of all, you need to become his child. That's right, a child of the king, royalty. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But first we must receive him, friends. And, and how can we receive Jesus? Well, we have sin, and our sin must be paid for. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Jesus paid the price for our sins on the cross, so we don't have to pay the price. In Romans 5, 8, it says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, friends, we must call on Jesus and ask him into our heart to save us. Romans 10, 9, and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I urge and plead with you to invite Jesus into your heart if you've never done that. And friend, if Jesus already is your Savior and you're a child of the King, how are you fulfilling God's purpose for your life? Are you seeking to serve the Lord in all your situations? Or are you grumbling and complaining and having a bad attitude? So could it be that we are all come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Let's fulfill the purpose that God has for us.